In December 2015, Jerusalem archaeologist Elat Mazar announced the discovery of an ancient clay seal, or bulla. The bulla contained an astonishing inscription. It read, Belonging to Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, king of Judah. This tiny artifact carried a sensational message. This seal proved the existence of one of ancient Judah's greatest kings and prove the accuracy of the biblical record. Dr. Mazar didn't know it at the time, but another bulla bearing an intriguing inscription was waiting to be placed under her microscope. The Old Testament record shows that King Hezekiah was a contemporary of Isaiah the prophet. The biblical books of Kings, Chronicles, and Isaiah show that this prophet played a central role in Hezekiah's remarkable reign over Judah. Today we have indisputable scientific evidence proving the existence of King Hezekiah. But what about Hezekiah's chief counselor and one of the Bible's greatest prophets? Is there archaeological evidence proving the existence of the prophet Isaiah? Now, the bulla of King Hezekiah was part of an se uh, assemblage. It didn't come by itself. First, we published King Hezekiah's bulla. That was the first thing. But then we studied the whole assemblage. And the whole assemblage contains more than 30 bulla. And one of them attracted our special attention. We were very uh, skeptic at the very beginning. We didn't jump on the, the idea. It says Yeshayahu. Okay, fine. This is quite a common name. And then it says Nun Bet Yud Navi, which is in Hebrew. If you just listen to it, to that Navi, it's a prophet. So wow, 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 the Shayao, the prophet. This is ha. Huh. I mean, and then you have something nearby, which is Chizkiyahu, the King Chazakiah near uh, the prophet Yeshayahu. <laughs> what uh, <laughs> fantastic! But then. We needed to study very carefully. The Isaiah Bulla was uncovered in 2009 during a small archaeological excavation on the Ophel. The Ophel area is located adjacent south of the Temple Mount and has furnished numerous important artifacts since it first began to be excavated in 1968. The Isaiah Bulla was discovered in an area adjacent to what archaeological evidence suggests was a royal bakery from the first temple period. Uh, the bread that we were excavating is just below us. So where King Hezekiah Bulla was found, just below here, where Brent is standing, and then the whole assemblage was spreading all over. So we first published this one and then worked on the other Bulla just as well as well as on figurines and other important items. And just on the other side of this, the same assemblage, just on the other side of that Herodian wall that was disturbing that assemblage in its middle, that we found another bulla that is of Isaiah. The bulla is small and can be divided into three zones or lines. The challenge when studying the Isaiah seal is that part of the bulla is missing and part is damaged. The damage was caused by a finger pressing against the soft clay when the seal was first created almost 2,700 years ago. You can still see the fingerprints. The fact that part of the seal is missing does not affect its interpretation. This is because the missing section is inscribed with an image or motif and not text Dr. Mazar believes it was the image of a grazing doe, symbolizing prosperity. The text on the second line reads, Yesha Iao. Although one letter is missing, there is only one viable option for the identity of the missing letter. It can only be the Hebrew letter Vav. So the text on the second line is indisputable. It reads, Yesha Iao. This is the Hebrew word for Isaiah. But is this Isaiah the prophet? The text on the third line is incomplete due to the damage sustained to the bulla's left side. 
Three letters can be deciphered, however, and together they read Navi. Archaeologist Reut Ben Arié has studied the bulla and explains why the missing letter is most likely an aleph, making the second word Navi or prophet. Among all the bulla from the excavation in the Ophel, we found this one. Uh, in its middle field, there was the name Ishaya. So it was very exciting to read in its lower field the letters Nun Bet Yud, which suggest the word Navi, prophet. But there were two problems with this suggestion. First, the word Navi is usually written with the letter Aleph in the end. Second, most of the time in biblical Hebrew, titles after private names appears, appear with a definite article, the, and we don't have that in our bula. So it was more reasonable to say that it is a private name, Novi or Novi, that is known from the Bible and also from epigraphic findings. But by examining the bula, I noticed that the borderline is seen only on its right edge and not on, on the left edge, which means the impression is not complete. If we continue the borderline, we can see that there is a space for two more letters in the middle register and for one letter in the lower one. Usually there is no empty space in the seal, so it makes sense to insert the letters Vav, He and Aleph and to suggest that this bula was impressed by the seal of Ishayahu Hanavi, Isaiah the prophet. While the presence of an Aleph is possible and even likely, there are other interpretations. Professor Shmuel Ahituv is an expert epigraphist and suggests Navi could refer to a place or surname. It's belonged to Isaiah, but that's all. Uh, because uh, it says Navi. Nun bet yod, which means Navi, but it lacks the Aleph. Perhaps Navi is to be pronounced Novi, Novai, or something else. Then that's a citizen or town of Nov. But of course, it can't be Navi, prophet. As I said, the lack of the Aleph. When we, in modern Hebrew, maybe, pronounce the name Navi, you don't feel, you don't hear the Aleph, but it was felt, it was pronounced. Although there are other explanations, the weight of evidence strongly indicates that this is the seal impression of Isaiah the prophet. Consider. First, it is indisputable that this seal is inscribed with the Hebrew name for Isaiah. While this name was undoubtedly common in ancient Judah, it is rare for an individual to have his own private seal. Only important officials or royalty bore their own private seal, so whoever this Isaiah was, he was important. Second, the position of the text in relation to the outer edge of the bulla suggests that there is space in which added lettering would almost certainly have existed. Third, consider too that there are only three potential options for the identity of the missing letter in Navi. The most logical and the most natural explanation is that it was an Aleph. With an Aleph, the word Navi means prophet. Fourth, and most importantly, consider the archaeological context in which this bulla was uncovered. The Isaiah bulla was uncovered at the same time as the Hezekiah bulla, in the same location, in the same assemblage, and in exactly the same strata of soil. What are the chances that we have just the name of somebody, Ishayahu, and his family name is Navi? It can be but it's kind of imaginary. Really? These two bulan of these two people that were so closely together described in the Bible are found in the same layer, just one meter at a distance from each other. The same context, the same layer. So it strikes very clearly that we're talking about the same two people. And to think 
It is not this person. It's another Yeshayahu. And his name is Navi, which is a prophet in Hebrew. Okay, missing the Aleph still. It can be there. And his name is Navi. The family name is Navi. It's, it's a... <laughs> not only, only imaginary kind of... It's, it's, it seems like it can't be. Consider what the biblical record says about the relationship between King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah. 2 Kings 18 and verse 5 says that Hezekiah was Judah's greatest king, second only to King David. But the books of Kings, Chronicles, and Isaiah also reveal that the key to King Hezekiah's success was his remarkable relationship with the prophet Isaiah. There are 15 occasions in the Bible where the names Hezekiah and Isaiah are mentioned in the same verse. Whenever King Hezekiah faced a crisis or needed counsel, he turned to the prophet Isaiah. And the prophet, inspired by God, guided King Hezekiah and all of Judah through the crisis. This was one of the most remarkable king-prophet relationships in the Bible. When you consider this seal impression in the context of biblical history, how likely is it that a seal impression discovered within a few feet of the Hezekiah Bulla and inscribed with the name Isaiah belonged to a man other than Isaiah the prophet? You can read Dr. Mazar's article on the Isaiah Bulla in Biblical Archaeology Review. The official study of the Bulla is found in Volume 2 of the Ophel Excavation Final Report.